Ariel Hawani in San Diego alongside the Strike Force 135 pound women's champion Marluz Kunin. And Marluz, uh, so much to talk to you about. Good to see you again. Yeah, it's been a while. Uh, first up, how are you uh, healing up? Uh, I know after your fight against uh, Liz Carmouche, a little banged up, you seem to be looking oh, like totally A OK. Fine. I'm totally fine. It's like the bruises, they go away, away within a week. So uh, that was all. In terms of your performance in that uh, fight, we haven't had a chance to talk uh, about it. I know you've had, you know, maybe a month or so now to digest it. Overall, were you? Ha I know you came out with the win. It was sort of a come from behind win. Were you happy with what you did out there? Well, I'm happy with the fact that I was um, behind on, on points so bad and I still made her tab. But um, no, it wasn't a good fight of mine, and uh, there are reasons for it. But I, I think. Uh, that has to be private because I don't want to, want to come up with any excuses whatsoever. Implying maybe injuries or things like that, things that happen in camp? It's stuff like that, yeah. Now, you were supposed to fight uh, Misha Tate. Obviously, she pulled out. And it seems to me like there are some people in the women's MMA community who are implying that Misha didn't want to fight you and came up with a reason not to fight you, an excuse, so to speak. Do you believe that? Uh, I don't want to make false accusations to anyone, so uh, I wouldn't disrespect her. But it did came across a little bit strange to me. But if she steps up this time, it's all forgiven. <laughs> but it happened so late. Well, why would you think she would, you know, agree to fight you and then two weeks before pull out? Yeah, well, what what was strange too is that she kept on promoting the fight. Well, we already knew f um, by a few days that she wouldn't fight me. It will be Liz. There are things, um, well, let me put it like this, it's not the smartest thing to do, and I think she's really good in promoting herself. So do you have any idea when this fight will now take place? Uh, yes, I have a kind of a clue. Can you share it with us? <laughs> no, no, no. Um, but um, uh, it hasn't signed yet. It hasn't been uh, official yet, So, but it will be this year for sure, 100%. Perhaps in the summertime? Uh, if I'm correct, it will be around that time. Maybe the June 18th show? I uh, know. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Yeah. And this is obviously, you know, it's amazing how much has changed in the last month. When you fought Carmouche, you know, Strike Force was Strike Force. Now it's owned by Zufa. What did you think when you heard this news? Well, I, w I was in shock at first, but then I got really happy. I know how Dana feels about it, but uh, I really believe that we women, like Zufa is a very uh, a good organization at marketing people. And look at how big all the, their uh, champions are. And um, I think we as women, we really can uh, attribute to uh, the Zufa income. As that we can, like, if um, more women, like a new target group, are drawn to the, to the sport and we're role models for them, I think we've got a really big loyal fan base that we can gain and uh, can make uh, income for Zufa. So I believe in it. And, and second, I refuse to not believe in it. I'm, I'm way too long in this game to give up now. You mentioned Dana White. He has said on multiple occasions that he isn't a fan of women's MMA, not so much because he doesn't like it, but because he says that really the talent pool isn't deep enough right now. Do you feel as though you need to prove something to him? Like that still, even though Zufa has purchased Strike Force, that the coast isn't clear, so to speak? Uh, we've, we've got, uh, my contract is for at least a year, so I've got a year to prove him wrong. <laughs> Is that your mindset? No, I, to be honest, I truly believe that Zufa is positive about the female fighting and uh, I hope I can uh, get a chance to talk with Mr. Uh, Dana. You haven't talked to him yet? No, I haven't. If there was one thing that you would like to see Zufa do to help grow women's MMA, what would it be? Uh, just put their expertise into our division and uh, we will grow. And uh, you recently celebrated your birthday. I'm not going to ask you how old you are. No, 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 22 no. is my guess. Yeah. Again. <laughs> but you were over in Thailand, right? Yeah. Celebrating. What were you doing over there? Uh, well, Elsa is preparing for his fight in June. And my trainer was with him. And he will be away for a month. And it was like, if I'm fighting any soon, I cannot miss out on my trainings too much. I'm also working out without him, of course. But uh, So I was there and I became Alistair's intern. So um, he took me to uh, his um, uh, fitness. And uh, I, when I was on the pads, he was guiding me and we've talked a lot. And I really learned a lot. I, I mean, this game for a long time, but I really learned a lot from him. And it was so kind, you know, I mean, He's the K1, he's the dream, and he's a Strikeforce champion, and he takes time to, to coach and uh, guide his uh, 
his peers, his teammates. Does this mean you also had to get him coffee and get his laundry nah, and things like that? Uh, That's no, what I think no, when no, I think no. intern. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Ellison no, no. knows me for more than 10 years. He, know, he cannot ask that. He knows that. So he was just showing you about training and things like yeah, that? It's more like, like my teacher uh, that week. My time was, also, of course, with us. But it's, it's uh, like, um, like one fighter talking to another and he was just sharing his knowledge with me. You often train with uh, women fighters, oh, excuse me, male fighters, right? In Thailand, were there any women fighters available for you to train with? No, I basically did uh, pet work and Alice had some uh, sparring partners as well. I, but I did work out too much with the guys. I was also with my manager, Boss Bone. Mm -hmm. He did hold, hold mitts for me as well. And uh, my trainer did it. And uh, because in my last fight, my, when I was fighting uh, in Japan, I knocked the girls often down or out with a single punch. And it didn't happen too much. So we're really working on um, like pinpointing my techniques in stand up. And um, we were also like def for the defense because all the girls are rushing me into the cage now. That's the strategy. And it did work. <laughs> so um, th th there are things we've been working on. And when I'm back in the Netherlands, uh, the camp starts again. Finally, now that you have settled into life as a 135 pounder, how has your life changed? I mean, have you had to drastically change your diet? Have you had to change things in training in order to keep that weight off? Or do you feel as though you've been able to figure it out now and it's really a matter of just cutting weight a little more? Yeah, well, uh, this time, uh, uh, the last time I had to cut weight, it was easier than the first time. So I believe it will be, will be easier every time I do it. And yeah, I have to uh, watch my diet. But uh, I did it already. I was already eating healthy, but I was eating healthy in the wrong way. And now I'm eating healthy in a good way. So uh, now I'm feeling great. But in, in the Netherlands, not a lot of people know me, though things are changing now. So um, I'm still like walking around easy like, like every Dutch uh, person does and going to the gym and work out and having my normal life. How are things changing? Oh well like uh, news big newspapers are starting to interview me and uh, just recently I got a, like the intellectual the most posh uh, newspaper in the Netherlands wants to do a big article and I just had one and uh, you know TV shows and radio shows are starting to invite me because in the Netherlands we do not have like the, the martial arts background mm -hmm. and we, there's a lot of uh, media coverage for the K1 and they know that there are a lot of big uh, guys out there who are in a kicking butt but a girl who's looking like a normal girl who's fighting in America that's like um, a big paradox to them so that's why it's so interesting well, you deserve it, and uh, happy birthday to you. Yeah, and we you. can't wait to see you again, uh, maybe in the summer, maybe in the fall, but we look forward to that fight, you against Misha Tate, finally. Yeah, finally. <laughs> Thank you for the time. Thank you, too.